I know, I know, I know. Wait, wait. Okay. Press conference. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, press conference. Okay. Yeah. Again? Just uh, Glad you made it back. that was going to say what the judge already concluded, uh, that the defendants never intended to do damage to a pipeline, in fact, did no damage to the pipeline. They never intended to harm anyone in Clearwater County or anyone on the face of the earth, and in fact, they did not. Quite the contrary. They decreased the harm 
History will show that this action is a small part in a larger effort worldwide to decrease the harm of climate change coming from things like oil pipelines. Thank you. Would you mind listening to credentials like uh, what made you stand uh, centralized for witness? Uh, yes, my background is in the development and transportation of oil and gas products, and including the fact that I'm one of the principal authors of the American Petroleum Institute Recommended Practice 1102 for the design of large diameter, high pressure gas and oil pipelines as they cross railroads and highways. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say that I, I'm very relieved the state of Minnesota, Minnesota acknowledged that we did no damage and intended to do no damage. Uh, I also admit that I am disappointed that we did not get to put on the trial that we hoped for. You know, we very much wanted uh, everyone to be able to hear, for our jurors to be able to hear from our expert witnesses. Uh, we did this action two, uh, almost two years ago to the day. Uh, Thursday will be the uh, second anniversary. Because the problem of climate change is so urgent that we have to start shutting the tar sands pipelines down now. Uh, we, there was a study in 2015 that indicated that by 2020, uh, the amount of oil being extracted from the tar sands had to be, quote, negligible, end quote. We have to stop using tar sands. Everything has gotten much worse, both uh, in terms of the climate emergency and in terms of the political situation. We have to change that, and we have to change it now. Yeah, I'm uh, Jim Hansen, and I was here to testify on the urgency of uh, the climate change issue and the need to phase off fossil fuels. And at, although I'm very happy that uh, the valve turners will not be going to prison, but uh, on the other hand, we should not take this as a victory. It's a victory in defense of them, but what we need to do is go on the offense and actually get the government to do its job, and that is to look out after the rights, uh, especially of young people and future generations, because climate change is already becoming apparent, but the impacts are going to be much larger for today's young people and their children. And that's what we have to make the public understand so that they will help us put pressure <coughs> on the government to do its job and, um, and move us uh, to clean energies, which we know is possible, but we're in fact still on a path of increasing emissions. So you know, we've got to get the public to understand that. I'm Ben Jolderzma. I'm one of the defendants. I was, it was really an honor to be able to support Emily and Annette in this, in this, in this work that we did two years ago. Uh, this is one of my uh, children, Vivian uh, LaRue Jolderzma. She's eight years old, so she's one of the kids that Dr. Hansen's talking about. And, you know, I'm just kind of a working guy from Seattle. You know, I, uh, I do software and I'm, I'm married and I have three kids. And I realized that for me, part of my job and part of the responsibility of parents today, it just kind of has to be sacrifice where can we make changes you know can we do petitions can we talk to our officials you know, just do all the things that we have to be doing to help get our government to do its job as Dr. Hansen refers to uh, I want to speak for a moment about the economic implications of, of these pipelines and, and oil and you know Snyder can go into it more after me but you know these things are very expensive there's a huge cost there's a lot of people with a lot of health care costs uh, and you know, as the International Panel on Climate Change uh, report came out this week says, there's up to 65 million new jobs that can be created with renewable energy. Those are good jobs in solar and wind and grids and demand response. There's all kinds of good jobs that the people of Clearwater County can have. At their, you know, if these energy companies do what they need to be doing and start doing a transition away from fossil fuels, which are destroying our planet, and start using renewables. So they have a responsibility to do that. I wanted to say that on the stand. Didn't get a chance to do that, but we're standing here. I'm, I'm glad that I don't have to especially lose any time with my kids. That's wonderful. Um, I'm gonna give it out to Dr. Snyder now, so. <clears throat> oh, uh, well, I'm Dr. Bruce Snyder. I, I'm a physician. I practice medicine in Minnesota for oh, over 43 years. And I guess my, my concern uh, with these issues has to do with uh, public health. 
Um, and what's happening when we talk about climate change, when we talk about fossil fuels, there's kind of this other piece, uh, which is pollution. That really needs to be addressed. Sands, the Alberta tar sands uh, operations have been shown to be the largest source of airborne uh, air pollution in North America. Now, it, it, this is having consequences for our health. Uh, people with asthma, people with heart disease, people who uh, are at risk for stroke, um, young children. Uh, the, uh, this kind of pollution increases the risks of developmental disorders, it increases the risks of uh, low birth weight and even uh, SIDS, uh, crib deaths. Um, we've got a lot of health issues tied into this, and uh, in some sense, it's, we think, I think, that it's the responsibility of uh, major businesses and corporations who do a lot of good things, uh, but to also take into account of their communities. After all, they have children too. Um, the economics that uh, we're just referring to, I'll just say very briefly, that's what, what's happening with climate change and with the fossil fuel related pollution is like an immense tax on, on all of us. So when Houston and Miami and the Carolinas and Puerto Rico uh, ex uh, sustain this extraordinary damage. Well, right here in Clearwater County, taxpayers are paying part of that. Um, whereas if you, if we can readjust this economy, and this is a huge adjustment that we face, if we can readjust and redirect our economy, we'll actually keep a lot more money in people's pockets. I think that's what it's about. Yes. I'm Kelsey Skaggs from Climate Defense Project. Um, Thank you! Woo! 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 This case is about uh, an act of civil disobedience for climate justice. And as Emily referenced, we intended to present an argument called the Climate Necessity Defense. And a key part of that is proving that civil disobedience is effective. So we had other expert witnesses lined up to testify that civil disobedience is an effective way of creating social and policy change with examples from the rich tradition of U.S. history of civil disobedience from the abolition of slavery to women's suffrage and the civil rights movement of the 1960s. And we know that this will be a key part of moving forward in the fight against fossil fuels. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.